Alright, we are going to uh, be looking at uh, the calculations for experiment 13. I have um, gone through and entered in some uh, data, just uh, some random data that we can use to, uh, to work the calculations. And uh, we're going to um, start off with, uh, it's asking for the absolute temperature of the water which we're using as the temperature for the CO2 so absolute temperature means there's no negatives we're just converting this degree C into Kelvin which means we add 273 in which case uh, 273.15 if you um, want to be more specific and so uh, you do that for these both of these values add 273.15 um, and then uh, that is in Kelvin. Okay, so next is it wants the barometric pressure in atmospheres. Okay, now um, the pressure that I gave you in lab was in uh, uh, I actually gave it to you in kilopascals, but if you convert that to pascals, you multiply by a thousand. And the conversion factor for uh, pascals to atmospheres is 101,325. Okay, you can get that information by going to the reference materials and clicking on. Um, on the uh, uh, common conversion factors and under the pres pressure heading there is your conversion 101,325 pascals is one atmosphere okay so that's where we get that and if we do the calculation you divide um, the pascals by the pascals per atmosphere to get that into atmospheres, you get 1.005675, or um, if we round that, 1.0057. Okay. It has a note to, to not round anything to uh, less than four significant figures, so we need to be careful about that. All right. So now. It wants the pressure of the CO2 gas in atmospheres. All right. So the pressure of CO2 um, is, uh, is, you know, you ha you have to look at uh, what all of the gases are in that container. Okay. There's CO2, but there's also water from the water vapor. Okay or there's water vapor from the liquid water, it evaporates and there's some gas, some water in the gas state wherever you have the water. Okay, Both of those components exert a little bit of pressure. So there's the CO2 and I have to account for the pressure of the water. This is the water vapor pressure. That's why we looked that up in the table. It's so that we uh, can convert, or rather, correct the um, uh, the pressure to uh, to be just the pressure of the CO2, not the pressure of water. Okay, so the way this works is um, the total pressure equals the um, pressure of the CO2 plus the pressure of the water vapor. All right? That's the equation uh, that we're going to use. Every uh, As many gases as there are, we call these partial pressures. This is the partial pressure of carbon dioxide, um, and you add those partial pressures together to get the total pressure, which is our barometric pressure. Okay, so here's our total pressure. We want, and, and we have the, uh, the partial pressure of water, 
which is 18.8 .8 millimeters of mercury. Okay. Um, and so if I want in atmospheres the pressure of just the gas, I need to convert this um, value. Uh, here we have this in atmospheres. This is millimeters of mercury per atmosphere. Okay, so if I want to know this in atmospheres, I need to divide it by 760. Okay, now I can take my pressure, my total barometric pressure, subtract the water vapor pressure. Okay, the total pressure minus the water vapor pressure will give me the CO2 pressure. So this in atmospheres is uh, for CO2. That's the partial pressure for CO2. Okay? So 0 0.9809 is my atmospheres here. Okay? And uh, do the same thing with uh, the 20.2 uh, millimeters mercury and 0.9791 uh, okay um, this is the advantage to using Excel you can um, just update that very quickly alright now it's asking for the volume of water displaced by the carbon dioxide gas so that volume of water is um, what we determined um, or what we will determine based on this information here. We have the mass of the water, the total mass which you had to measure in stages, and then the density. So we take those together. Uh, let me let me just do this. I'll copy those. So here we have the um, mass in grams, and the density was 0 0.9980, and that is in grams per milliliter. So if we take the mass, divide that by the density, we get the volume in milliliters. Okay. So 426.6661. Alright, now um, here we really don't need to uh, carry that out to that extent. Just don't go short um, on the significant figures. That's the main thing. You can carry, uh, carry those further, but don't cut them too short. All right? We'll do the same thing here. Um, and this time I have 0.9977, so it's 432.108. All right. Next, we want the volume of the CO2 gas. Okay. Well, that's what we just uh, just found, the volume of water displaced by the CO2 is the same as the volume of CO2. So the main thing here is we're converting that to liters. All right? So and in this one all right so okay so moving along uh, now it wants the mass of CO2 generated in the reaction okay so this is where this is after we've liberated the CO2 okay so we're going to take this value and subtract it from the original mass that we had here okay so there is my uh, value after 
here's my value before and if I subtract them 1.3662 okay All right. and we do the same for the other one as well uh, let me just substitute those in here um, all right and now you see 1.3113 okay